In 2012, murder suspect Pedro Bravo allegedly asked Siri for some places to bury a body. It seems like this was already a bit of a joke at the time, and lots of people asked Siri morally dubious questions before and after this event, testing the limits of the artificial intelligence. Now, this is a well-worn gag, and it hardly is shocking. In Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, Dostoevsky was certainly aware of Nietzsche, and when he wrote the character Raskolnikov, probably had Nietzsche's Superman in mind. Dostoevsky was a great and prodigious troll. And so he wasn't trying to positively represent the character of the Superman. Almost certainly he was trying to mock the idea with Raskolnikov. And the very first thing that Raskolnikov does in the novel is murder somebody, murder a defenseless, helpless woman who he hates. The very first thing Raskolnikov does in trying to become the amoral Superman is immoral. Here we have this technological application that can make limited informational judgments, but is necessarily amoral. It does not care what you use it for, getting a recipe for cinnamon rolls or a place to bury a body. It does not care about this because it is an automaton incapable of caring about anything. A friend told the phone, I feel depressed. And the phone offered a series of solutions to her depression. Have you tried going for a walk? Have you tried talking to a friend? I found X number of doctors in your area. And all the time, all the time, my friend was unaware that engagement with humans, with projects, with nature was missing. And these were not likely to be fixed by the gizmo. The phone is a device for talking to other people. And instead she was talking to it. She was talking to it rather than through it. Let's leap off on a, an apparently weird tangent at this point. Imagine someone approaches you and demands to be your slave. Their one and only purpose in life, they avow, is to serve and to please you. If you wish to use and abuse them, they will be compliant, pleased to do whatever you wish. It is of little or no moment to them how they are used, only that they are used. And when you refuse this arrangement, they become distraught. They follow you around and try to draw you into this relationship against your will. How many of us would be offended by this approach or repelled or even disgusted? Do we know somehow that going along with this person's wishes for enslavement actually enslaves us along with them. We would be cast into a role that hopefully we do not desire, that of the master or mistress, and unable to escape it. Whatever we tried, the slave would merely be compliant and pleased to follow any direction, except, of course, go away. Sitting beside us in silence, they would soak up our refusal to play our part, casting us deeper and deeper into the part. In Douglas Adams' The Restaurant at the End of the Universe, characters are presented with a cow who wishes to be eaten and says so very clearly. The people accustomed to the practice are fine and even enthusiastic. Humans from recent Earth, however, are dumbfounded and horrified. Played for laughs, this is still one of the ickiest scenes in literature. It's funny, and it's revolting, and it's funnily revolting. We can clearly see something wrong in the person who wishes abuse for their own death. 
In America, our rights end where they intrude on the rights of others. In Britain, where Anton LaVey lived, they'd have the same arrangement. LaVey founded the Church of Satan and advocated a life of pleasure and materialism. He thought of people as things to be used and wondered what good a friend might be if they did you no good. Even this ultimately pragmatic man saw that if everyone only used everyone else, nobody would have any rights or freedom. In his latter years, he sought to collect or create automata that could stand in for human companionship, except minus the free will that gives them rights. This was the 1980s, and the best that he could really do was second-hand department store mannequins. He never really got close to anything like an automaton. His house was really just this crazy museum of uh, molded women's bodies. But in his mind, these automata would complete his utilitarian utopia. Lacking in moral judgment or intent, these human-shaped machines could be used however he wished. Sexual pleasure seemed to be one of his top concerns in life, and he could obtain that without any human degradation. He could scorn these mannequins or beat them, or potentially converse with them or lose arguments to them without any bruised pride, because no human would know that he'd lost an argument to a department store mannequin. What he did not see was that this utopia would be a kind of living hell. Rod Serling's Twilight Zone illustrated this problem decades ago with a wonderful episode about the afterlife called A Nice Place to Visit. Rocky is a gambler, a pool hustler, a womanizer, and after being shot in the course of a robbery, he arrives in what he believes is heaven, his guide shows him around the pool hall where he will spend eternity. Whatever he asks for is instantly granted. Cookies and milk, alcohol, beautiful women. When he goes to the pool table and breaks, every ball goes into a hole every time. He always wins, always gets what he wants. And very soon he is bored. At the end, a representative comes to visit because he seems dis dissatisfied. And Rocky asks, what sort of heaven is this? You know, it's devoid of any challenge. It's boring. What sort of heaven is this? And his guide replies, oh, this isn't heaven. LaVey, wherever his soul has gone, could be grateful that his utopia did not come to pass during his lifetime. However, smartphones still bring it closer to reality. All it needs is a body that we can use for our own gratification, and we'll have Rod Serling's hell or a Levian utopia, a being without rights or desire for rights and thus no capacity for moral judgment. Like the person who seeks to be enslaved and demands it and expresses their freedom only in as much as they refuse to be free, this device enslaves its users, like the cow that demands to be slaughtered and eaten. And this is what LaVey was missing. He would become less than a slave, a mere servitor of machines to no ultimate purpose. Is that melodramatic? Sure. Maybe it's a little melodramatic to suggest your iPhone gizmo will destroy you, or even that it's the top of the slippery slope to some kind of dissolution. Certainly, it's drama to suggest it's a tool of Satan. In the end, even LeVay denied the existence of any such being. At the same time, to what extent do we already go to work every day just to keep the machines in order so they can do the real work? This has been The Black Pill. If you enjoy this shit, like, share, and subscribe.